but it's it, the besides the challenges, the obstacles, um, the discrimination you talk about, and how there is a, a really exciting and wonderful element to the world um, that people living with a disability can ultimately explore. I guess when we when we talk about that social model, when when the world accommodates them, um, and when when you do have those equality in terms of opportunities. Um, now, what I normally do with all my guests that I get on the podcast is I kind of get them to to provide a bit of some more practical tools that that listeners can use. You know, it's not just us rambling on and talking nonsense, but some things mm-hmm. that they can really take away from each episode and, and apply in their own life. And if there's any, you know, parents out there living with, uh, you know, a child that is living with a disability or if they're living with a disability themselves, um, you know, what kind of self-help tools, apps, you know, podcasts are out there, even ergonomically friendly, you know, brands or devices that, you know, you, you've found yeah. there's, there's actually a website in Australia called Spinal Life Australia, and they actually have like accessibility on their page. So there's a map and you can actually rate different restaurants or facilities in cool. terms of their accessibility. Yeah. Um, the Access Now app has a very similar function, which people can download on the app store and Android. Yeah. Um, And, you know, there's augmentative and alternative communication apps that provide, you know, picture-based communication for people with intellectual or speech impairments. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. And I I can't name specific because I think a lot of them are, you know, um, UK-based, like Access Able and so forth. um, I don't know what your your normal, um, your target, uh, where your demographic are. location, yeah. Uh, but um, all I would say is if you are um, prominent on social media, um, I would say, you know, follow people like me and then look at who I'm following and kind of learn that way. I think there's such a rich, um, you know, for all the woes of social media, um, I think what's beautiful are young disabled people are creating their own narrative. And that's really nice to see. That's something that I didn't have um, growing up. You know, I think, you know, best bit of advice is, you know, if you've met one deaf, disabled and neurodivergent individual, essentially, that's what you have done. You've met one deaf, disabled or neurodivergent individual. Like we are all the same. I think for parents, you know, I had quite a toxic codependent relationship with my mum, which wasn't healthy for either of us. So I think, you know, parents need to be very respectful of boundaries with their um, disabled kids, you know, um, I, I I appreciate that you want to protect them, but, you know, they that it's their life to live. And although you are there to help facilitate that, you know, be mindful that, you know, um, they have their own voice. So even when we're talking about language, you know, avoid using euphemisms when we're talking about disability, you know, ask, ask your child how they want to be, how they want to identify you know, so it's about autonomy, ultimately, and I think we kind of forget that. Um, also, be mindful that um, of the language you use. I, I, I actually came under a, you know, kind of a lot of heavy, heavy, um, I don't want to say through to me, but from, you know, parents when I, I wrote about, you know, be mindful of not overusing the word brave um, around disabled kids. Like, I felt like a lot of my a lot of my childhood, which was, you know, having operations or, you know, in pain or feeling excluded by peers, you know, my, my parents would use very kind of um, posit- toxic positivity, I suppose, words like, oh, you're so brave and you're so great. And although I think there's a time and a place for that, but actually what it meant was I, I masked, I masked and I hid a lot of my Problems. emotions and I, I felt like, you know, I couldn't actually express the fact that sometimes um, I wanted to feel sad about my situation. Um, and, you know, as an adult now, I'm I'm in therapy, um, not just for that, but, you know, these are things that I explore in therapy. So just be mindful of, of parents that if your kid, as I said earlier, if your kid wants to have a violin day, allow them to have the, a violin day. Um, it doesn't mean that don't give them positive reinforcement, but I think it, like everything in life, there needs to be a balance. 